It is our top story tonight. The day when you can retire, leave the rat race behind, enjoy leisure time, golfing and traveling. Yeah, well, for most of us, that day is looking further and further away. Sure, the Dow hit a five-year high on Friday, but that means if you stayed in, you made no money in the past five years. And don't get me started on taxes. Put it together and it adds up to big delays in retirement. A new study shows nearly two-thirds of Americans aged 45 to 60 plan to put off their retirement. Today's Money Power Panel is here to help you. Spencer Patton is with Steel Vine Investments. He's their chief investment officer. We also have Peter Schiff. Euro Pacific Capital CEO and Susan Ox, former Treasury Department advisor under President Obama. Welcome all of you back to the show. Um, Spencer, let me start with you. When we talk about people retiring later and later, you blame the Fed in part. I really do. The Fed has done a tremendous disservice in robbing savers, people that are planning on retiring, the people that are not trading in the stock market, but most people that are setting aside money, the chance to be able to retire. You're seeing not only have they not just not made money, they've lost money due to the inflation and the withering away of the U.S. dollar as the Fed just prints money endlessly. It's, it's, it's horrible. Uh, and it's, you know, it's just further pushing yeah. back retirement for people that can't afford a delay. Peter, has retirement just become a thing of the past? I mean, we're all just going to work until we die and die at our deaths at this rate. Well, you know, I think one day in America, one day soon, retirement will be as rare as a single income household. You know, at one time it was the norm in America, only one paycheck. It was very rare for a married woman to work outside the home. Now it's very common. Well, one day it's going to be just as uncommon for somebody to retire. And I agree, it's because of the Fed. It's because we're destroying the value of our money. Look, the stock market is back up to 14000 or it was briefly on, on Friday. But that's only in nominal terms. The stock market isn't getting more valuable. Our money is becoming less valuable. Yeah. And so if you look at the real value of our assets, they're going down. The cost of living is going up. Health care costs, food, energy, everything is getting more expensive. And even if you have these de depreciating dollars, what kind of yields can you have? You can't even get 1% on your money in the Susan, bank. Susan, this so is so how depressing. Can you Come on, rescue, rescue. I'm going to be weeping here soon. Rescue me from this. I was just thinking the same thing. No wonder these two are, are feeling so bad about how things look. So I think the important thing to realize about a survey like the one that you, you cited is it's really a snapshot of consumer sentiment at the time. It's not really entirely predictive of what their behavior will look like. This is, how are you feeling financially? Are you, do you feel secure or not? And people Aren't don't feel secure. Aren't they looking at their 401k, though, when they're saying something about this? I think for people who are in there, because we're looking at people 45 to 60. So if you're in your 40s, do you really have any sense of when you think you're going to retire in 20s? You're really thinking about what does the job market look like? Um, you're hearing all this talk about entitlement reform out of D.C. So you're thinking, I'm not sure Social Security or Medicare are going to be around when I retire. And so I'll probably have to stay in the workforce longer. So I think that this is more indicative of how people feel today than what they might actually wind up doing down the road. Spencer, I, the truth What's is, the though, problem? I mean, those are great points. But at the same time, I talk to people who are in their 60s and are saying, I had to plan to retire. I've lost, my home's lost a lot of value. I was thinking I was going to sell it and use that money to retire. A lot of people really have had to put their plans on hold. What advice would you give them? Yeah, and I just want to respond to that because I think that's people are, are looking at the price of things costing what they cost today versus what they cost 10 years ago and are seeing a dramatic difference. You're seeing prices when you include inflation, include the cost of food and energy and see gas prices as high as they are now compared to 10 years ago, the price of food versus 10 years ago, tuition for kids 10 years ago, and all they do is extrapolate and say, where are we going to be in 15 years? And that's a really depressing well, picture. About it. So I mean, it's a I lot more find than some just solutions, the job Peter. I'm going to give you a crack at it. I mean, you buy gold. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, well, you should be buying gold. But one quick point before I get to that is people aren't even <laughs> talking about uh, the unfunded liabilities. Everybody's share of the national debt. We all talk about the national debt, but those are obligations that we as Americans now have because of our government. We have to pay all this money back with interest, and interest rates aren't always going to be low. So we can't retire. We have to pay for all the spending that's not being financed so right hopeless. now. So it's totally all these hopeless. Deficits I feel have hopeless to be paid. now. Is that, is that the message? It's yeah. hopeless. But what, what, what you can do is recognize that the dollar is going to go down dramatically, 
And, and, and if you don't want, you know, the, your, your money is going to retire before you do. So what you need to do is get out of dollars, look to diversify internationally, look to own stocks, bonds, real assets outside the United States in currencies that the Fed can't destroy and own something of real value that pays a decent dividend. So you actually can get a return on your investment, Susan, on you your savings, that? not just watch, watch your savings be ripped okay, out from okay. under you by the Fed. I know I'm depressed, Susan. Do you agree with that? <laughs> I think, look, diversification is always smart, right, in terms of, of, of retirement. The, the challenge is, you know, it's really easy to say, oh, the Fed's destroying the economy, but would you rather they were raising interest rates right now? We'd have it, our economy would be falling yes. off a cliff. A you are yes. insane. I'm sorry. There, there is no way that that would make for a productive economy because the one thing here, and I've said this to you no, before, no. Melissa, the one thing that would fix things here what is getting to. What we have right to, now is not on, a productive on, economy. Let me it's an inflationary the one bubble. Thing that would on, fix, Go ahead. The one thing that would fix this right now is getting into a, a, a stronger economic growth scenario, which we don't have. And if, if you start to tighten up interest rates, we are never going to get there. Peter, tightening up interest no, no, rates we're is never as stupid get it as raising keep taxes, right? Low. Aren't they the same amount of stupid? Uh, we, tightening up interest rates and also raising taxes both strike me as terrible. Ideas no, right now. no, I don't want to raise taxes. We want to slash government spending. We want, to, we want to liquidate the bad debt. We want to let prices readjust. We need to save. We need to produce. We need to export. We can't just keep borrowing money so we can consume imports. That's how we destroyed our economy. Our saving That's not is how actually one of the highest it. levels it's been in decades. So we All are right, saving. Guys, but, we're going to leave there. I'm not sure we solved the problem. Growth. Okay, Peter, you're fantastic. We're, but I think we just drove a lot of people to drink tonight. So let's wrap it up. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll have you all back soon with a cocktail or something. All right.